I came across what appears to be a leak for the July NPD report, uh, which tracks software and hardware sales for video games and obviously a lot of other stuff, but we're focusing on the video game aspect here. And the report itself is actually supposed to go out on Thursday, so the report's done, right? It, you know, there, there might be some media members who have gotten their hands on it already. I don't know. I found this leak myself. Uh, in the hardware predictions thread on NeoGAF for July 2017. Uh, whether or not these leaks are true, we'll know for sure on Thursday, but they definitely sound pretty in line with traditional MPD leaks. Uh, it's interesting in here because they only have one game listed in this leak. So, again, this is not a full leak. We don't know all of the details, and we obviously don't have the official comments from Nintendo or Sony or Microsoft or any other company on the MPD report, which usually released the exact same day. So we might have a follow-up video to this on Thursday. But I wanted to talk about these leaks because for a lot, we, we've talked briefly at, at times in the past about the Nintendo Switch line situation in Japan and the lottery that's going on and how crazy it's, it's getting there and how the sales are going nuts. And I don't report on the sales from Japan every single week. Uh, I know, I think I did actually recently report on the sales from this past week where it was like 61,000 units and Switch was number one, uh, which was just an interesting fact considering that a popular PlayStation 4 game released. However, Nintendo Switch was not the number one selling hardware back in June. That The number one selling hardware was the PlayStation 4, which continues to have strong sales even now. Now, according to this leak, which you have probably seen on screen for a little bit, the Nintendo Switch is back in the number one spot in North America, and it has sold 222,000 units. Interestingly enough, the number one selling software for the month of July, according to this leak, was Splatoon 2, which sold 332,000 units. Now, these are physical units. The MPD does not count digital sales, so unless Nintendo gives us a report on Thursday that includes digital sales, we're not going to see any other numbers for Splatoon 2 but this. Uh, this is obviously very interesting uh, in that the Nintendo Switch uh, reclaimed the number one spot by a, a decent margin, and this is during a time when the PlayStation 4 itself is up 34% in sales at 217000 over the same month last year. Uh, maybe not so surprisingly, the 3DS numbers are actually down 44% at 105000 Now, there's no Xbox sales listed here, uh, and maybe they just weren't available at the time of the report, or maybe the person who leaked this stuff just didn't care about Xbox sales. So we will see updates on this stuff on Thursday. Uh, maybe we'll recover it when we have a grander scope of what's going on. Now, interestingly enough, uh, PlayStation 4 had very strong sales in software last month. In fact, they had 2,209... Wait a second. This is 2.2 million 299,000 uh, units of software selling last month. Uh, Nintendo Switch had 736,000 software selling last month. 3DS had 384,000, which is about a 50% drop from last year. And I think we're going to start seeing this over and over again. Nintendo Switch is slowly killing off the 3DS because it is a portable platform. Even though it's a hybrid, it's a portable hybrid. So it's a platform that a lot of people are playing exclusively in portable mode. And it's something that the 3DS just isn't going to keep being able to keep up with as time moves on. And I think this is why the reports that Nintendo plans to, to you know, potentially kill off the 3DS in a couple of years aren't exaggerated at all. Uh, it's very clearly trending in that way as Nintendo Switch sales continue to soar and are eating into the 3DS sales year over year. Uh, this is just a really interesting thing to me because Nintendo Switch, I, I just reported that today, the day this video is going out, that every single GameStop in North America uh, received Switch units today. And people are start, starting to now report that they're seeing more Switch units at Best Buys. Uh, some have said they've had no problem finding them at Toys R Us's, which is great. Uh, I have my own theories behind why they're easier to find at Toys R Us's because I don't think, at least in my area, Toys R Us isn't considered a place that you go to first for consumer electronics. It's a place you go to get toys for kids. Uh, which is totally fine, and it's not a place that I personally would think of to go go get video game stuff at. But 
I also haven't had a Toys R Us active in my area in probably 10 years. So if one was and I knew this whole video game stuff, I would probably stop in uh, anyways. Plus, I, you know, whatever. The, it's just Toys R Us. It's just a fun little place to be in. Um, I know I loved it when I was a, a, a kid and we actually had one in this area. So when I look at these numbers... I'm just really happy to see Nintendo back on top, and I'm very curious, you know, I'm almost more curious what the numbers are going to be like for August, if it's true that not only GameStop had all these units in today, but that more and more units are starting to appear, because we don't really know the true popularity of Nintendo Switch until it is able to meet demand. Uh, and I say that because I think it keeps selling out, but we don't know how well it can potentially sell until there's enough of them in the market. And once there's enough of them in the market, is it just going to be one big month of sales and then it dies off because now everyone that wanted a Switch could finally get one? Or is it something that's going to continue to have sales momentum? And I think, you know, you know what side I stand on. I think it's going to continue to have sales momentum. It's definitely going to continue to have momentum in Japan because they, they still have Monster Hunter Double Cross coming, which is going to sell really, really well. I don't know if it's going to sell as well as the 3DS version since the 3DS has had so many more units out there but i do think it's something to pay attention to and i i honestly think that uh the switch is going to continue to sell gangbusters over in japan through this year and when pokemon lands on it oh boy i mean i don't know if nintendo could possibly make enough switches uh ever in japan to meet the the sales potential of a Pokemon game on Nintendo Switch. Uh, and then we have to consider in the U.S., you know, with all these sales catching up, I'm going to be really interested in the August MPD. I, I feel like this month, the Switch, even though uh, it's it doesn't have like a Splatoon 2 kind of game coming out, uh, I feel like Nintendo, you know, there's a Sonic Mania release, which is reviewing very, very well. And again, obviously multi-platform games. So how well it sells on Switch in comparison to the competition is another thing to track. Uh, especially with, since Sega has been working directly with Nintendo for a while, so it'll be interesting to see. Maybe there is a bigger audience for Sonic on Switch than there is anywhere else. But it's just interesting to me to watch what happens this month. Uh, I predict that the Nintendo Switch is going to sell even more than 222,000 units this month. You know, we could be looking at 300,000 if demand's really catching up. Um, you you want to get crazy predicting 400,000? I think 400,000 or 500,000 or, or something crazy like that is something to, to reserve for a launch month of like super mario odyssey so october could see like a huge boom like that in the united states because mario odyssey is going to sell well almost everywhere but it's definitely going to sell well in the united states uh and i think there's a reason that nintendo is catching up here with this hardware now you know now that we've seen some numbers for july or some potential numbers for july and we're looking at you know towards the future i think nintendo's trying to get as many switch units out there as they can because they know as all of us may not want to admit to, but we also know that third-party games, big AAA third-party games, are coming out uh, throughout the rest of this year, starting, I think, on September 15th or 19th or whatever it is with uh, NBA 2K. And those games need to sell well if the Switch is going to continue to get those franchises and more in the future. So NBA 2K18, WWE 2K18, FIFA 18, and even Skyrim, you need as many Switches on the marketplace as you can before those games release to give those games all a chance to cross the 1 million sales mark. Because if they do that, I think that's enough to convince third parties to at least invest in Switch for one more year and see if they can build on those sales and sell 1.5 to 2 million of say NBA 2K19 or whatever the following year and continue to build up a following as the Switch's audience continues to grow. Plus, I think this year is an excellent year for third parties because Nintendo's next big game is, uh, I believe it's Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, which I think is going to do well. Uh, I think it's going to do surprisingly well for Nintendo. And then Super Mario Odyssey and then Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Three huge games. I know there's only, you know, four and a half months to go here, but that's just three games over the course of like, you know, what's 14, 16 weeks or so. That is not actually a lot uh, when you consider that a platform can usually support two, three, sometimes even four big games with one major release every single week. Uh, so third parties, that's where they come in. That's where I think these games have a chance to to succeed i know i personally am buying nba 2k18 apparently buying it digital because i don't want to wait 
And uh, I'm really hoping that it stacks up well compared to the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 versions. I realize those versions are going to be prettier. I understand it can't look as good, but if it can hold up gameplay wise, look decent, as, you know, as decent as you could hope for it to look, uh, and include every single feature, not be like FIFA where it feels like some features are cut out. Uh, be the full engine and give me the full gameplay experience. If it can do that, I'm going to be extremely pleased. And I, I know a lot of you are not going to care, but I will have videos on NBA 2K18 coming up because I, d I really do care. I'm, I'm a big sports fan. I love sports games, and I'm going to have some videos featuring some sports titles in the future that come to Switch. And there's not a lot of them, so it's not like you have to worry about that being like this big thing we cover. Uh, yeah, so that, that's really all I got for today for now. Uh, there hasn't been any other news that has really tickled my fancy. There's a few things floating out there. Uh, but today is really the day Sonic Mania arrives, and a lot of people seem to be hyped about that. There does seem to be some minor issues with it. Uh, nothing that I feel like is worth reporting on at this point because it's only happening in handheld mode, and I'm betting you know, within days it'll be patched out and fixed. So, uh, yeah. Otherwise, Sonic Mania looks fantastic. I can't wait to get my hands on it. 20 bucks. Don't have it now. We'll have it someday. I'm hyped. As always, folks. Oh, and, and before I, I sign out here, I just want to let everyone know that I have been talking to some networks out there. Uh, I've heard your requests in the past for gameplay clips in our videos. And you know, the big stopping gate to having gameplay clips versus still images is Nintendo and having to delay videos potentially up to three days for Nintendo to approve of them. Uh, and other companies as well, any other companies like Konami that, that copyright claimed uh, a video I did using Puyo Puyo Tetris. Uh, as always, if I can get partnered up with the right, not, not just any company, I've been talking to several, but if I can get partnered up with the right network that can give me a, what I fear is a fair deal on the advertising revenue and can protect me from these copyright claims, you're going to start seeing video game footage appearing in these videos, which the good, the, I think the best news about this isn't even the fact that you're going to start seeing Nintendo footage more often on this channel. It's that it'll allow me to finally do video reviews of actual software not just product reviews of battery banks and total mount and different different accessories for Switch or whatever. Uh, we can start looking at actual game reviews and seeing how you guys react to it and if you like my style of review. Because again, it's going to be my style of, rev of review, not based on how anybody else does it. Uh, it's going to be my opinions and how I feel I want to approach game reviews. Uh, so I'm looking into that stuff, and hopefully I'll have a positive update for you guys on that. Hopefully by the end of the week, if not next week, uh, because, again, negotiations are ongoing. And we're a small channel, so it's not like we have a lot of power at this point to ask for a lot of things. But there, there's a few basic things I want to make sure get put in there. Because I think once uh, we're already a, fast, a quickly growing channel, like uh, at least I think we're quickly growing, considering that uh, we were at 17,000, you know, just like three and a half months ago, and now we're, you know, know at 25 plus and starting to look at 26 uh i see this channel potentially hitting you know 50,000 60,000 by the end of the year and i know that's really ambitious but we're we're really you know this nintendo prime nation here is really pushing forward and i'm so thankful for you guys and i feel like if we could just bring that extra step of visual quality to our videos uh, we're going to even, you guys are going to appreciate it and we're going to drive even more subscribers who are more willing to watch the videos because they're entertained by the actual stuff going on in the video, not just me talking. Uh, and obviously I'm always looking to up the video, the audio quality as well. Um, now that I have a proper mixer and stuff for the podcast, obviously ne the next step is getting better microphones and I am running live streams where I have a donation fundraiser through those live streams. In fact, I'm announcing right now that tonight you will see, I believe it's the Breath of the Wild Master Mode live stream, part 11 of our attempt at a 100% run in Master Mode of Breath of the Wild will be happening tonight here on YouTube uh, around 8 p.m. Central and it should be running for a good three or four hours. It's going to be good times. And obviously, as I said, when I run those live streams, I also have a donation link for you guys to donate towards getting new equipment in the office, which right now happens to be microphones and a camera. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Ruffeljans from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. If you dislike this video, hit that dislike button. Otherwise, folks, thank you so much for subscribing, and I will catch you in the next one.